Hi everyone, welcome to The Witching Week. Today is episode number 80. Today we are talking vandalism at Stonehenge, we're talking monoliths again, and we are looking at deja vu along with a few other topics. So you know what I'm gonna say, grab a cup of tea, put some incense on, and we'll explore The Witching Week. Hi everybody, welcome, welcome back and hello if you're new to the channel or new to The Witching Week. Every Friday or nearly every Friday we get together for a cup of tea and a bit of a chinwag. We look at the events of the previous week and of the week to come and we discuss the seasons and the wheel of the year. So make yourselves at home, you're very welcome. My apologies for not being here last week. We had our third engineer out to have a look at our internet and he was here quite a good portion of the day we thought we had everything fixed and up and running we had really good speeds on friday afternoon and then saturday it dipped out again so we'll be having an engineer back out again at some point it seems to be that they call us we discuss it they book an engineer, which is invariably at the end of the week, and then the cycle starts again. So my huge apologies for that. It's also summer solstice, one of my busiest weeks. It's kind of up there with Christmas, Yule, to be honest. Um, we have the summer solstice, which invariably means doing something really tiring. And also we have a couple of birthdays as well within the week. So very, very busy, busier than my average week. So all things combined, by the time the BT man went, um, I did not have enough time to film, edit and get it up. And I was absolutely exhausted as well. So we're here, we're here now. We're gonna cover all the events from that week and this week in today's episode. So first, tea and incense. Well, I was gonna have a cup of Laird Superfood Hot Chocolate, which I'm going to be reviewing soon over on Patreon, but I'm currently trying to get into ketosis. So I'm trying to lose a little bit of weight at the moment. And yeah, I've been drinking this and this is not gonna help me get into sort of fat burning. So I'm actually, as boring as it is, I'm on the water today, but it's also, it's been really, really hot this week. We've had like 27, 28 degrees. So I've been hiding out inside, but I'm on the water. And I'm burning one of my favorites, Tekken Tonka. I was burning this a few episodes ago, decided to dig it back out my incense tub. And I really, really love this one. It's like an African inspired uh, incense. Um, let me have a look. Souvenir of Africa, wooden houses, full of spices, cinnamon, nutmeg and clove just waiting to be shipped off to other continents. Tech and Tonka recreates this blend, one of the most delicious in the history of perfumes. Um, first time I've read that actually. So uh, what does it say? It doesn't say anything else, but anyway, Tonka Bean, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know what tech is though, but yeah. Absolutely lovely this stuff, absolutely love this. So, summer solstice, um, what did you get up to? What have you been doing this week? Tell me, let me know in the comments. Summer solstice fell on the 20th this year. It can fall anywhere between the 20th and um, the 22nd. We had a lovely curry out that evening. It was my brother-in-law's birthday, so happy birthday, Tim. And then the next morning I got up for the sunrise, so the morning of the 21st. So we had the moment of solstice, astronomical solstice at 9.50 p.m. on the 20th. And then we moved into the sign of cancer. Um, and yeah, I got up the next morning, that's when you do it. So uh, I'm still sleepy. I'm still absolutely exhausted from this week. So I got up on the Friday, which was the same day that the BT man came. I got up on the Friday at 3 a.m. and went to Borough Hill Fort, which is about eight miles from my house, and met a couple of the guys from the moot over there, which was really, really lovely. And it was the most beautiful sunrise. It was well worth it. Um, I then got back and proceeded to have a bit of a doze 
on the sofa until the man turned up. He was the only one out of the three who turned up on time at eight o'clock. All the others turned up at like 10 o'clock and it's typical, isn't it? When I could have done with a couple of hours sleep. I was really, really cold as well. Like I didn't feel cold out of the hill fort. I felt really warm, um, really well wrapped up. But um, dozing on the sofa, I felt a bit, well, dangerously cold almost, although that might be our house. So yeah, it was such a wonderful time. It was so lovely. What did you guys get up to? Did you have a good time? I'm sure many of you were working on the Friday. Um, it is really exhausting getting up at that time and doing that before then doing your day's work. I want to say that there's loads of confusion. The last few festivals, I've really noticed a massive sort of upped, uptick, if you like, in confusion over the dates of certain festivals. I think this is because we have lots of people coming to paganism now, which is absolutely fantastic. And I think they're seeing things on TV, like Stonehenge, for example, where they say, oh, people are celebrating the, the summer solstice, which they were, but the date is getting confused. So it's an astronomical date. The solstices and the equinoxes are related to the sun. The, the whole wheel of the year, the celebrations, they are solar celebrations. And these four in particular, the solstices and the equinoxes, they are movable dates, they're movable feasts. So they won't always be on the same date. But where the confusion comes in is that some pagans don't understand this and other pagans choose to celebrate on the 21st of the month. So that is both solstices and both equinoxes because it just gives them an anchor. The other four dates in the wheel of the year are fixed or sort of semi-fixed, but they, yeah, they don't move, you know, like so Samhain, people will celebrate it the night of the 31st into the 1st, so both dates, but that doesn't move, that is fixed. So I think in people's busy lives, it's just easier for them to have a fixed date, the fixed date of the 21st, but the astronomical point of these festivals moves. So a lot of confusion again this year, a lot of answers telling people the wrong things as well, saying no, the solstice is on the 21st. Arguably, the solstice was from the 20th, so the astronomical point of solstice, really up until the Sunday, which was, I think was maybe the 23rd. I can't remember that date off the top of my head, but we reached the longest day and then the days did not change in length from the Thursday until the Sunday. And then on the Sunday, we lost a minute of light in the Northern Hemisphere and those in the Southern Hemisphere will have gained a minute of light. So you could say that actually solstice ran uh, the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, up until that Sunday, so yes, the 23rd. So lots of confusion there. I think it's absolutely brilliant that lots of people are coming to paganism um, and witchcraft, but I am not surprised at the confusion because there are people that have been celebrating for 20, 30 years that don't understand these processes and how they work. So if you've ever got any questions like that, then just find me on Instagram, um, drop me a line, um, drop me a message over on my Facebook page or find some other way to contact me and I will help you understand which date these festivals fall on and the reason why. So yeah, don't be afraid of getting it wrong. It really doesn't matter. It's really not that important um, because there are lots of things that you can celebrate as each festival comes around. So as Henk, the Archdruid of Avebury, has explained before, over in Avebury, they consider the solstice the moment that the sun is at a certain point on their personal horizon where a bank runs, so between some trees. So that could be the moment of solstice that you celebrate if you were there. It could be when a certain flower appears or a certain plant flowers. It could be, it could be any number of things. It could be that actual astronomical point. So all in all, I think when we were there at the spring equinox, Henk counted up like 12 things that you could mark that point in the season by, 12 points of celebration. So it is all together at once complex, but also not very complex. Just celebrate, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have the right day, the wrong day, 
more often than not, people celebrate for several days on end. So we went to a party on Saturday and celebrated the summer solstice then. Um, and the point was on Thursday. So it really doesn't matter. Just enjoy yourselves. Life is too short to be worrying about stuff. So this, well, last week when we had this solstice, we had some vandalism at Stonehenge the day before, which is really, really sad. Two people um, were arrested for this. They were members of Just Stop Oil. And before you, you go to turn me off, I fully support uh, Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion in their mission to stop the climate emergency that we're in to get the message out and to stop the damage that we are doing to our planet. I totally understand the the idea behind this. I totally understand why it was done. However, I think this was the wrong way to do it. Um, it's kind of like preaching to the choir. Many pagans are environmental activists. They gather at Stonehenge because they want to connect to the earth. They want to stand by rock under sun and sky and moon. They want to connect with other humans. They want to do that standing on the earth. They're natural people and they, more than anyone, also share the worry over the climate emergency. Again, not crisis, emergency. But I think vandalising a sacred monument, especially one that is so, so old, that has rare lichens on it, is not the way to go about it. I think that when you do this, you actually end up sort of pushing a people away from your cause. I'm sure there are much better, more creative ways to do this. Um, I, I share the same level of concern and worry. I wish there was a way to measure, and I'm sure there probably is, I'm, I wish there was a way to measure the correlation between these stunts and whether people feel drawn to these causes or pushed away from them. And I'm sure that these sorts of acts actually just encourage the wrong people to get on board, to then do worse things in the name of Just Up Oil and Extinction Rebellion. Becoming antisocial, so vandalism, is that really where we want to go as a society? Yes, I get it, I get it. We need to grab people's attention. We need to do drastic things. We need to get people on board and get people to understand that we are going to die. We really, really are, we, you know, this is an emergency. But I'm not sure that putting things like rare lichens at even, yeah, you know, more risk is the way to do it. Yes, we may possibly die and then we won't we won't be worrying about Stonehenge, we won't be worrying about these lichens, but I think putting them at risk is not the way to it's not the way to do these things. So I was really, really sad to see our sacred monument vandalised in this way. They said it was just powder paint. They said it was corn flour and it would just wash off in the rain. But I don't think it is a very good example of, you know, how to behave. And I think attacking a monument that is revered by so many people who love this earth, I just don't think that that was the right way to do it. What do you think? Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe this was absolutely the time and the place to do it. Who knows? So the day before Stonehenge, in the news, I read that we had yet another monolith appear. So it appeared in the Nevada desert. The Las Vegas police were apparently doing a search and rescue mission and in their search for, I don't know, I'm assuming a person, they stumbled across this monolith. Apparently it looks like one of the ones in 2001, A Space Odyssey, and a lot like the ones that were um, put out into the world in various places in 2020. Nobody has ever come forward to claim them. Nobody has come forward to say what the idea is. Um, is it some sort of art installation? Are they just having a little bit of fun with everyone? Is it in fact extraterrestrials? Because they've appeared in some pretty random and some pretty difficult places. And I believe that this was in a similar place, sort of like really, really out in the middle of nowhere in quite a difficult area to reach. So very, very interesting. Maybe you saw this in the news. But um, yeah, I did have a definite sense of deja vu 
when I read that because obviously back at the beginning when we started the Witching Week that was one of the topics um, that has come up. It might even be the third time actually this topic has come up because there was one in Glastonbury wasn't there up the tour and I think I covered that one as well as possibly the original ones. I don't think we started in, we didn't start in 2020. We started this in, because that was the height of the pandemic, wasn't it? This was started the Witching Week in 2022. Anyway, we've definitely spoken about monoliths a couple of times on here, um, these ones in particular. And I guess, yeah, we've just been talking about monoliths at Stonehenge, haven't we? So yeah, we're monolith-tastic today. So talking of deja vu, I've had a really, really strong sense of deja vu this week and I absolutely hate the feeling because I don't know why. I never used to get the sense of doom as a kid. I used to get deja vu a lot as a kid. Now when I get it, I feel this real sense of impending doom and something always bad is gonna happen. And it's like, I know what it is, but I can't quite grasp it. It's, it's like having a word on the tip of your tongue. And it's like any minute now, the penny is gonna drop and the point at which the penny drops, the bad thing is gonna happen. I have this a lot. I don't have it as much as I used to. Apparently two thirds of populations surveyed about this have said that they've experienced it once at least in their life, um, which, which is a weird thing for me, the idea that someone might have had deja vu but only ever experienced it once because I have had it so many times in my lifetime, it's unreal. And this is where it gets weird. So apparently deja vu is correlated with higher economic status. I don't know why that would be. I'm not sure why that would be. Um, is it because you have, apparently it's memory related. And so if you have a higher economic status, I'm guessing you have more life experiences therefore you have got more memories to draw for your brain to draw upon and have this sort of short circuit because i think that's basically what deja vu is it's correlated with better educational attainment so again that kind of fits doesn't it because if you're of a higher economic status you are more likely to have had a good education it's more correlated with lower ages, which certainly ties in with my experience of it. Um, I wouldn't say that I had a bad education. I had a regular school education and then did higher learning once I left school as an adult. Um, and I wouldn't say I had high economic status. I was from a very normal working class family, or should I say I am from a very normal working class family. But it's also correlated with frequent travel and frequent film watching. So yeah, I guess before I made this video, I was like, why would that be? Why would you get deja vu when the, those things are in play? But I've, I've worked it out while we're, we're recording this. I guess it's to do with your memory bank having had more experiences or experiences, memories that are similar to the situation that you're in and then the brain has some kind of short circuit. So deja vu comes from French. It's, yeah, it comes from sort of like already seen, similar wording to that. And it is associated with temporal lobe epilepsy, but not schizophrenia. They've done so many, so many sort of studies and so much research into this it's actually really really interesting deja vu they think there might be a possible link with a gene on chromosome 10 they're not sure for certain and they're currently studying this so it could be that we're going to learn more about deja vu in the coming future which i think is really really interesting and then you've got something called jamais vu which I can't quite get my head around. I don't think I've ever experienced that. But yeah, deja vu. I get it a lot. Do you? Have you ever had it? Have you never had it, perhaps? Um, yeah, I wonder why it is my brain does that so often. But I absolutely... It's the worst feeling. It's the worst feeling. When I used to get it as a kid, it was just like really curious. And... I used to, yeah, not enjoy it, but it used to be quite interesting. Now, I absolutely, and I know, I know you get the feeling and you know it's deja vu. You know, you know it's not a real thing, 
But when I'm in that moment, I can't quite talk myself out of, don't worry, the bad thing's not gonna happen. It really feels like it's coming. And I had it so badly yesterday, hence me bringing it up today on the Witching Week. So each year on summer solstice, I like to really, really reflect on my life, where I'm at, where I'm going, and this year was no different. I guess I do this on every festival. And um, we, we, we traditionally, we do it on summer solstice because it's like the light is shining on all the blessings in our life. The light is shining on things that need to be changed or fixed and it's just shining a light, metaphorically speaking, on who we are, what we're doing, where we're going, what we're up to. But I think I like to do this pretty much every festival and it's a really great thing, isn't it? Every six weeks we get to, or six to eight weeks, we get to have a little look at things and have a little review period. <coughs> Excuse me, the, uh, the incense is getting to me. Um, so on Samhain, I did the same thing. I look back, it's, Samhain is the third, isn't it, of three pagan harvests. And I decided I would grow my grape back out. I decided that I'd had enough dyeing it. It was, um, yeah, I just decided that I needed to be my authentic self. So here we are, we're like eight months in to that growth. And yeah, for this, for this festival, I've decided I need to go on a diet. So with the issues I've had with my heart, it's been really, really difficult to exercise. Even with all my health issues, I have always exercised. You know, when you have things like fibromyalgia and Ehlers-Danlos, it's really important to exercise. So you reduce a lot of muscle pain when you gently exercise with fibromyalgia. If you can build and keep some light muscle tone, it really, really helps. I found it really helps with fatigue levels. Um, with Ehlers-Danlos, because you've got such a wide range of movement, which causes pain and injury and fatigue, it's really good to have those muscles in your body, um, have some decent sort of shape to them so that you can kind of like keep your skeleton together if you like, you know, your muscles are holding your bones in, at least that's what it feels like. So I've not been able to exercise now properly for about a year and a quarter. I stopped going to the gym altogether. I couldn't even walk around the block because of getting out of breath because my heart was, we don't mean, I don't mean here like, um, and I'm fit out of breath. Obviously that comes from not exercising for a year and a quarter, of course, but this is an altogether different type of out of breath. You really feel it in your heart and you really feel it in your lungs. It's like you can't get a full breath. So now I'm taking some medication. Yes, I'm waiting for it to be put up. I'm struggling again, I'm getting fatigued again, but I can still walk around the block. I can still do a little walk here and there. And I've put on so much weight through lack of movement. Um, I've also, I guess, kind of really started eating to comfort myself. I don't drink, I don't smoke. Uh, I generally just drink water. Um, and, I, and I make all our food from scratch, so I'm, I'm generally quite healthy, but there were a few comfort foods that were sort of trickling in. And also when you're feeling very unwell, you, you tend to reach for high caloric, calorific food because you feel like you need that, that energy from it, that sort of instant hit that you get from sugar and stuff like that. And it is so bad for you. So I have decided this turn of the wheel that I am going back onto a low carb diet, which I've done before. It helps you get into ketosis, which is when you burn fat and it actually, actually helps with things like brain um, autophagy. So you, your brain, you know, you become clearer, you become more alert, you, your body uses its fat stores that are on your body, of which I have plenty at the moment, and it uses that as its fuel. And because it does that, some of your body's processes work a lot better. So we're back to the low carb diet. So I'm eating so much in the way of fruit, veg, nuts, eggs, things like that. Um, and yeah, it's it's really, really weird because I tried so many times in the lead up to the summer solstice 
to make these changes and I just kept failing, I just kept failing. And then I'd have like a last minute pig out because I'm going on a diet on Monday. And that has actually been partly responsible for piling on the weight. So I'm back to eating very, very healthily again, which is normally who I am. You know, I am a holistic therapist, but this year has just been, well, it's been bonkers basically. It's just been, it's been, it's been rubbish. <laughs> so yeah, I'm back on that. And it's weird how the summer solstice arrives and boom, I'm just able to do it. I, I just don't know what it is about the festivals and having these moments of reflection and my will, my willpower surrounding these points, but they give real meaning to my, to my life. Um, these moments where I decide, right, yeah, that's it, I'm doing it. Um, that seems to work really, really well for me. So Lunasa and the Autumn Equinox Marbon, as some people call it, I think that is going to be very much centred around gratitude, I think, you know, the harvest, being grateful for being here still, um, and it's maybe slowing down a little bit, maybe slowing down a little bit. I was kind of forced this year to massively pick up the pace before I was even ready to step into having my own business. And whilst that was really good initially, I found myself getting quite, feeling quite run down and very, very fatigued in the last couple of weeks. So if I can find a way to slightly take my foot off the gas, because uh, I can feel myself getting poorly, then I'm going to need to do that over the winter. So I'm trying to be as productive as I can be right now in these bright, warm, sunny months where I can bear to get out of bed in the mornings. But as it gets darker and colder, I suspect it's going to be a lot, lot harder to get everything done. So what would you like to reap in the next harvest, Lunasa? That's our next Sabbath that we are going to be looking at. Obviously, we've got a little bit of time now. We've got the rest of June, which is obviously only a, a couple of days at this point. Then we have all of July, and then we will arrive in August. So we will have Luna. So, oh, sorry, my, my tummy is rumbling. So yeah, I want to make some big changes. I really hope to be in a different place this time next year. I really hope to be um, feeling different at Samhain. You know, I hope, I'm working towards major life changes, major overhauls, just continuing with this spiritual journey. And I'm, I'm really putting the effort in at each one to think, right, where do I need to be? What do I need to do? What do I want to achieve? Any thoughts of being unwell and ill are just not welcome. I'm just pushing those away. Um, I don't know if that's a wise thing to do or not. I don't know if I'm gonna end up paying for this later on or not. Maybe I'll just go out with a bang at some point, but I really want to make some big changes and I really want to see a difference in this next whole turn of a wheel. So a whole year, I want things to be very, very different by the summer solstice next year. So we will see. I have been working on some things. I keep hinting at it, but we'll see. It's taking a lot of time. Something I've been working on, I started at Samhain, and it has been, it's been a bit of a slow drip um, and it's taken a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of money, but we'll see, won't we? We'll see. I don't know if I'm ever gonna watch these videos back. I know some of you watch them and they'll be like three or four months out of date. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, they are topical, they are seasonal, but I know that some of you watch them. Um, I didn't really sort of envisage that these would ever be evergreen material and they're not in the same way that some of my other videos are, but I do know that some of you watch them back. Maybe I will have to do the same same at some point. But yeah, how did you reflect on the sun solstice? Was it bittersweet for you? It usually is for me. I usually feel a bit sad at this time of year because the bit we've waited for, for so long it would seem, is suddenly done and dusted. I know that's not the reality. I know we've still got the rest of June, all of July, all of August, really, and then into September before it starts to feel chilly. 
but um, it just comes around so quick and the summer just goes so quickly, I think, because we really, really enjoy it and there's stuff to do. But how did you feel this year? If you normally find this a really, really bittersweet time, did you struggle with the summer solstice? Maybe you were just busy enjoying it. I really, really hope so. So I saw this week uh, a little snippet on Facebook. It was a post. Uh, I didn't recognize the lady's name, but she had quite a few people following her. She looked to be kind of um, maybe related to Druidry, I don't know, but she announced that the major oak in Sherwood Forest is dying, that the root system has completely died and that this summer is the time to go and visit it because it's not gonna be about after the winter. I had a look online and I couldn't find anything, anything at all to support this claim. That's not to say that it's not true. Um, but yeah, the the major oak in Sherwood, which I've been lucky enough to visit a couple of times, it's over a thousand years old. They're not sure how old exactly, but it's definitely definitely a thousand years old. They do say that it takes 500 years for an oak tree to go. 500 years where it's in its prime and then 500 years to die. So hopefully we've got it a little bit longer, but it might be an idea to uh, on the side of caution and go give it a visit if you've always wanted to see it. It is incredible to stand in front of such an old tree, a tree where you think that, you know, when you think about like when I when I see trees, I always think of grandparents and I think of a tree, whether it was you know, whether it grew before or after my grandmother was born, my grandmother's not with us anymore. And I think of like her long life, she she lived till she was in her 90s. And I guess I kind of, as a human being, think of that as being a long life. But trees, they obviously live much, much longer. And to think of a thousand years, you know, that's that's so many generations back. I find that thought so fascinating and when you stand in front of that tree and the others in Sherwood Forest they are so very old and you think of a thousand years I think they possibly think it's more like 1100 years don't they and it is just incredible to think of other people stood there 1100 years ago a thousand years ago it's absolutely mind-boggling I find that mind-boggling right so we're going to do some cards now Let's have a little look at the energy for the week ahead. Okay, I picked three cards today. I say I picked, the first two flew out and I must admit, I had that sort of, uh, that sort of inward groan that you, or outward groan even that you have. It's inward and outward, isn't it? When certain cards um, turn up, there's that sort of like, oh no, sort of feeling and like, oh, Anyway, we've got the tower. No one's ever happy when the tower shows up. We have the Eight of Cups and we have the Empress. So there may well be something this week um, that makes you feel like something that happens that just makes you feel like it is a total catastrophe. I have keywords for each of the major arcana and for the tower, I was taught that this card stands for certain catastrophe. So it's usually something that happens out of nowhere that you're not expecting that just feels like the ripping down, you know, the, the if you imagine the tower falling down, you know, just coming down everything that you knew before just completely falling by the wayside so but the good news about the tower is that it happens but it happens for your higher good so although it feels awful it doesn't carry the heartache and the pain that comes with death that's a completely different um feeling that's the card before certain catastrophe the tower so it's a completely different feeling a completely different energy there's not the pain there's not the heartache yes it's very stressful yes you did not want it yes it wasn't expected but there is something lovely about the tower and that is it's a chance to rebuild it's a chance to make something better it's a chance to rebuild a tower that was even more wonderful and beautiful and spectacular 
than the tower before. So I think of it as like an opportunity to rise from the ashes like a phoenix. And I'm always reminded of the flames at the top of the tower. So yeah, people are falling out the tower and they look completely shocked and completely bewildered. And you know, if there's going to be an event this week that happens, that where you're left feeling like that, don't worry, the feeling will pass, the feeling will pass. There is the message of the Eight of Cups about walking away, walking away from the things that harm you and don't serve you and aren't do, doing you any good. And maybe that's where this feeling of certain catastrophe comes from. Maybe it is the making the choice to walk away. There's also the message with the Eight of Cups to not ignore your mental health if you are having problems. So very much about self-care do not ignore things especially your mental health if it needs to be dealt with it needs to be dealt with so thankfully my third card which when i do this it feels like you know the cards that i bring out in order are the order in which i deliver the message and the third card is the empress and she is a very welcome card after the tower and the eight of cups and she she reminds you of your ability to create. So if these events, if these feelings, if these situations, if this feeling in your heart of certain catastrophe and needing to walk away from something, if that is leaving you feeling sad and despondent and depressed and low, she reminds you of your ability to create. So when I think of the Empress, I think of the female, the feminine, um, skill of creating. That doesn't mean that only women can do this. Everybody has that within them, male or female, regardless of who you are. But when I think of women, I think of them taking ingredients and making a cake or making a meal. I think of them taking a building and making a home. I think of them taking sperm and making a baby. Is that feminine creative force that we have within all of us, males too. And she reminds you that you can make something from this situation. So you can rebuild that tower, you can build it back up. You can turn the situation into something beautiful and wholesome and worthwhile and really, really satisfying. So please take heart that if you have a certain catastrophe moment this week, I'm not saying these are not these are not fortune telling cards. These are about our way to our capacity to deal with things. It's about human development. It's about um, our wisdom as we go through the journey of life. So I'm not saying there is going to be a certain catastrophe this week. It is giving you the message or reminding you of the message that you have within you the ability to turn any situation around and to take a certain catastrophe, a tower moment, and turn it into something beautiful and sustainable, something that makes you happy and fulfilled. So never fear, never fear. So yeah, perhaps an interesting week ahead. We shall see, won't we? We shall see. So that's the end of our session today. Thank you so much for watching. If you got this far and you're new to the channel, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And I'll be back next Friday with another episode of The Witching Week. Have a lovely week. Love and blessings to you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.